So with the shuttle company and the line of work I do, I see a lot of bikes, maintain a lot of bikes, ride a lot of bikes, and thanks to the way my brain works, I seem to have a million ideas of how I can make them better. Whether those ideas are any good or not is up for debate. So in these crazy times, with lockdown keeping me out of the workshop and in the interest of staying sane, I'm challenging myself to design, prototype and hopefully ride all these crazy products that have been bouncing around my head for years. So this is the 48 hour design challenge bike edition. So welcome to this one. This is episode 3 of my 48 hour design challenge bike edition. If you haven't watched the other two, well worth it. Go have a look, I'll link it up there and down below. In each one of those, what I've done is I've asked you guys what, what you'd like me to tackle next and every time, pretty much, it's come back as the Fender or the Mud God. So, what we're doing in this one, and it's an idea that's been bouncing around up there for a while, is a parametric Mud God. Every single bike is different. You've got different geometries, different wheel sizes, different forks, different riding styles, everything. So now what parametric means is that you can go in and change certain parameters and it updates the end file. What I want to do in this one is make a Mud God that you can go and customize what you want it to look like, what size you want, the clearance from the tire, the, the front cutout, the back cutout, Everything about it completely customizable so you can get the perfect mud guard. What I'm going to be doing in this, and I've done a lot of research on it, is using the parameters function in Fusion 360. What I understand about the one in Fusion is that you've got a little list, you go in there, you type, I want it this long, this wide, etc., and it comes out in the end as the mud guard that you want. So, two goals, probably two different streams of thought. One's going to be working on that parametric design and the other one is going to be focusing on the fixing to my RockShop pike. So like last time, we're going to dive into Fusion 360. I'm going to set up my reference geometry. I won't go into too much detail with this. I've done it in the last two videos. And then what I'll do is I'll dive a bit deeper than I normally do into setting up those parameters for your parametric design. So this actually took a lot longer than I thought it was going to take. Setting up the reference geometry is such a complicated shape. I used a mixture of the two methods that I did in the first two videos, one being building from photos and the other one just taking measurements. There was a lot of back and forth and this actually took me most of the afternoon. In terms of how this, how this will work, I guess you'd have, you'd have this fit shape, I want to call it. The fit shape will be individual to each fork that you would have and then the the programming and the parameters around the the actual mud guard itself that'll be generic so each each file would have one of these and then you change your parameters towards, towards the mud guard does that make sense it makes sense up here so once you start with the parameters part of fusion what you get to do is you get to decide the key metrics that are going to dictate what you design. So here you can see me putting in wheel size, tire diameter, rim diameter, all the important bits for my initial reference geometry. So then when I go and start my sketch, all I have to do is click on the dimension, type what parameter I want to use, and then it updates that sketch with that parameter. This is a really fast, really efficient way of controlling your sketches. Once I've revolved the sketch, this will kind of put into place the wheel of my drawing. So all I have to do is go into the parameters, change the wheel size, change the tire thickness, and we'll update the wheel accordingly. I then dove into getting the profile of my mud guard correct. This took into account quite a lot of different parameters, the main ones being the clearance between the top of the tire and the mudguard, the sidewall of the tire and the mudguard, and how far that mudguard comes down the sidewall of the tire. I then revolved everything, got a good feel for how it was going to clear the tire, and then started working on the top profile of the mudguard. These here again took into account quite a few parameters, how far the front of the mudguard is going to extend past the fork as well as how far back it's going to go on the back of the tire. Right, 
Right, so pretty much spent all afternoon getting the fit right. Yeah, but it fits. So also the the whole concept of this thing kind of came together pretty quickly. So what's pretty cool is that tomorrow I get to kind of just focus on making it number one look good, which is very important. And then number two, not fall apart when you change parameters. So there might be a point where certain parameters have limits and you're not allowed to change them outside of those limits. And then um, other ones will just have recommendations and that kind of stuff. But all in all, pretty good. See you tomorrow. Before I even began yesterday, I started by adding the stanchions and the lowers to my sketch so that I could see where the mudguard might hit those. Moving forward, every single decision that I made or, or geometry that I put in, I linked it either to previous geometries or to a parametric variable. This gave me complete control of the model itself. All I had to do when I went back was change one of those parameters. I then went in and separated the mud guard into two separate parts because it wouldn't fit on one print bed. I also added fixing points for where the cable ties would go through. Saved it all out for SDL, put it on the print bed, banged it on the printer. Alright, so first print off the printer. Not gonna lie, looks amazing. The issue that I did have or do have is it's really touching and it shouldn't. It should be it should be at that same offset that I set to my parameters. What I think it is is that the fit bracket of it, I've I've designed it, but I've designed it offset a bit. Um, a bit more than it actually is or a bit less than it actually is so I'm gonna have to reprint this piece and uh, try again to be honest the, the most difficult thing about this whole project has been the fit on that fork I think what you what you do if you took this a bit more seriously is you'd actually 3d scan the fork itself get a really good 3d model to work off and then go from there um, re doing it by reference geometry works, but it's slow and cumbersome, especially in the 48 hour design challenge. The easiest bit was actually the, the designing and building the fender itself, so pretty stoked on that. So just to show how this works is, I can go into the parameters, put in all the geometry that relates to my bicycle, so wheel size, tyre thickness, and then decide how far the mud guard needs to be from the tyre, how far it sticks out in the back of the mudguard, how far it sticks out in the front, and then it populates in real time what my mudguard's gonna look like. And then I can save those files straight out and put them on the printer. So today's ride day. Got these bad boys off the printer last night. Probably four and a half hours of printing. Nothing too crazy. The there were a few issues though with these. The second fixing point didn't print, so I had to drill it out, which was quite difficult without any drills. And then this this one, I'll, I'll probably have to optimize the, the build material just on this bit. Also in that, in that uh, work I scratched. Anyway, it's all right. Prototype looks like it works. She's looking pretty sexy, look at that. Oh. Get on the bike, go for a ride.
still sprays like off the back of the tire. Yeah. But like, you, you know when it, or like, you know when it sprays up in your face? It's not doing that. Okay, well I think that's as good enough as the test you're gonna get with quarantine. Sweet, so that's it. Um, yeah, pretty pretty stoked on that one. This is probably my favorite product out of out of all three that I've made. Couple things that I I do need to go in and check. You, you would have seen that the 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 angle is still not quite right. What should happen in there is that the offset from the wheel should be exactly the same in the front and the back. It also might be something that I can actually change and control in the parametrics. So I'll probably look at doing that. Um, also, what I did want to do because like you can see in this one, the cable ties come through the, the top um, and then the, the like bulb, I don't know what to call it, the fixing of the cable tie sits underneath there, which limits the clearance between this and the tire. Uh, that's also something that I would want to kind of go in and check. I'd really like it to, that, that piece to kind of sit inside this um, so that it's all flush within there so you don't have anything and then jumping around. So yeah, if you have any ideas or comments or want to just let me know what really matters to you with a, with, in terms of a, a mud guard, um, maybe I'll do a part two. We'll see how we go. Hit that like button if you do want a number two. And um, yeah, make sure you subscribe and I'll, I'll see you next time, eh?